I call this meeting of policy committee to order at 6.56 p.m. Roll call. Ethan Bertrand. Present. Spencer Brandt. Present. Jay Freeman. Present. All present. Uh, we have an agenda, which I have open here. She's now big. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And just for the record, um, for anyone who's watching this. Oh, this future, meeting is being recorded. And it's recorded. starting late because uh, we had trouble entering. Yes, we had right. trouble entering. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, that's what happened. Yes. Uh, not enough trouble to stop us from holding the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, uh, we have, oh yeah, this agenda. So uh, public comment. Is there any off agenda public comment today? All right, moving on to number one, consider policy recommendations for staff and contractor selection and review processes. Consider recommendations of policies related to the process by which contractors and or staff are recommended to the board of directors, including, but not limited to, the delegating of roles for review of applications, conducting interviews, and forwarding hiring slash agreement recommendations to the board of directors. Spencer Brandt, I believe this was an item that you requested and in fact put together the agenda. So Correct. would you like to begin? Sure. So um, I think that it would be wise for us to um, make policies on when the board is looking to either hire personnel or when the board is looking to enter into or um, submit some sort of a request for uh, different firms or individuals to provide services to us that we have some procedures in place that we can all agree upon that are the way by which the recommendations for who should be hired or contracted with get forwarded to the full board. Um, uh, because I anticipate that um, there will be a situation in the future where we will need to figure that out. And I just figured might as well get that out of the way before we do have to get that figured out. Um, and so I figured it would best be done here at policy committee because it strikes me as advantageous to have a pretty uniform policy on how these uh, staff and, and contractors are selected. Um, not, that's not saying that the way that staff and is selected in the way that contractors are reviewed and selected. It's the same exact process, but for those two categories, there should be a process um, that should be as conducive as possible to um, making sure that, number one, we as a board um, obviously have a lot of, uh, given that we don't have any staff right now, it makes it difficult for us to have conversations about these things outside of meetings outside of public meetings um, and so we would want to make sure that the uh, review process is as clean as possible without um, having to have too many people who have talked about too many things where it just gets brown act messy um, but also to provide for uh, public engagement in that process to an extent to be able to voice their input on what their um, what their values are in terms of um, being able to uh, hire staff or, or enter into uh, contracts um, with proposers. So um, I don't have anything specific prepared, but I think that it would be good if we kind of all go around and share suggestions because my initial thought is that um, the uniform process should involve um, the appointment of an ad hoc committee that um, may have members of the public serving on it. I'm pretty sure that that's something that you can do, given that the ad hoc committee is, is, is simply advisory and less than a quorum, um, and that, um, that 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 would be um, that would be a committee that would serve for a limited amount of time for the, the purpose of making a recommendation. And then the other thing would be um, what the recommendations that such a committee would make would look like. Would it be just recommending one person or one firm or one um, individual and then the board says yes or no or would it be three or four 
or would be two. I mean, there there are a lot of possibilities. And ooh, what is that? Soda water. Okay. Um, and I, I I figured that it would be better for us to outline these procedures ahead of time um, in advance of of potential uh, things coming up. And I won't talk about anything the formation committee has done, but I will say that we've had discussions both at the board level um, and in formation committee about two things where this might be pertinent, and that is the contracting um, for uh, legal services with a firm or an individual um, and the potential for a general manager. And so um, I that, that's what I have to begin with, but I think that we have a lot of potential to be able to craft something out tonight. Okay. So if anyone else has any initial thoughts they'd like to share. Um, I'm sure I'll come up with something, but yeah, yeah same. Yeah. I mean, I, I've I've kind of been confused with this agenda item because I know um, like one thing that's going to be really important is the RFP or search process, and I don't really see that here. But I think we can still talk about it. Um, is that something that you're looking for in this policy, or are you looking for more the board to just set that at the time? What do you, What do you mean an RFP? You mean well, that would that would be involved in the, I, I'm thinking that, I mean, in any RFP, there's the contents of the proposal, right. which I don't think is something that we really have jurisdiction over in, in this body. But then there's also the selection and the process. And so those are two distinct things in my mind. And I'm just wondering, like, are, because what I thought we were going to do is say, outline a policy, like, um, upon the opening of a new position or the need to contract with an individual or firm to provide services, the district shall declare the position open for X amount of weeks. Are we looking to do something like that within this? Or or is that something totally separate? Would you have mind scooting a little bit closer to me? I just feel really far away. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I can scoot as close as without my laptop screen getting hit. Oh, okay. If there's if there's like a uh, a reason why you were in that exact position of the table, I'm just wall of shade. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just yeah. I just feel it. So the I I guess I'm kind of confused by your question. Okay, we can let's let's get started and we'll see where it fits in. Because what I saw was the most what what I thought we were going to be discussing a lot in here was how do we go out and select people, which in the past like for for anything that were similar to what we did with the um, when looking for legal services, we went out and did outreach, um, and I was wondering if that was something that would be part of this a, a policy for. This must be posted for this long, um, but well, I I mean, here. So my initial thought is that the way that the board um, did outreach for legal services when the board initially sent those letters is not exactly the, the kind of thing that I imagine we would be discussing. Okay. But it's it's also something that is pretty atypical. Um, in terms of, at least I would imagine, in terms of that being written out. The, the way, I mean, that we went and solicited services from different organizations. Oh, I think that's normal. atypical. But what I think is very typical for any organization is we are, when we have a new position, we are going to have it open for at least two weeks to be posted in classifieds, on CSDA, CSDA website, mm -hmm. and announced at our public meetings. Like, something like that. I was wondering if we are looking to put something like that in this policy, but it seems like we're not, which I'm totally fine with. Um, but that was one of my ideas, um, and then also interested in the inter interview committee makeup. Those were kind of the two things I was thinking about coming into this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose I see what you're, what you're getting at. Um, I, yeah, I don't think that that's something that's noticed.
But I will say that I think the more important of the two is the makeup of the interview committee in the case of staff and the contractor review committee in the case of contractors. Okay. So should we bifurcate it, contractor, like a policy specifically for bringing on a contractor and bringing on staff? Um, I would imagine that there would be an, a necessity to do that. Cool. Then maybe we should start with a contractor just since that seems the timely one. Let's do it. Start with contract. Well, I guess just contractor <laughs> selection and review. I was, I was looking at a little bit of a broader scope. Um, maybe like upon a decision of the board of directors to. to Solicit qualifications from qualifications and proposals from interested parties. The board of directors shall appoint an ad hoc committee to be responsible for recommending proposers to the board of directors for execution of an agreement. Execution of an agreement. So before recommending for reviewing. Oh yeah. And recommending Reviewing and recommending. I don't like the word proposers. I also don't like the word proposers. I was actually like, is it going to be a word? Let's see if it's a word. Oh, it's apparently a word. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, I think that's pretty standard. But we can change really? it to potential contractors. How about applicants? Is that? Mm. I think applicants implies an application. I also thought it was clunky language when I first started reading requests for proposals as well. I mean, we could do pr pr potential contractors as well. Uh, well, if proposers is standard, then let's do that. I just okay. didn't know. Should it be from interested parties for contractual work? Or just at, at the end? No, in the first sentence, after interested parties. Oh. Or is it just good as it is? Contracted work? Um, I, feel like it, I feel like it's unnecessary. Okay. So the components of this are, I think we need to outline an, um, an interview process. Okay. So but let's, I do, let's I do want us to clean up the end of the the end of it though for execution of an agreement. I think it should be for selection and I think we can leave that execution part, but just have selection. Okay, there. that makes more more clear. And subsequent execution of an agreement. Sure. Yes. Should be. For selection and the subsequent, or no, I think the piece sounds weird. Okay. I almost want to say we should put a period here and then explain more like the board of directors will then be responsible for drafting an agreement. Perfect. Well, they still have to execute it, though. I feel like instead of drafting, the more important part is executing or 
taking action to execute the agreement. Because imagine a situation where we have like a large bureaucratic structure, but the board of directors is like somehow still responsible for drafting an agreement. Right. Um, so let's, before we continue, because I think we have a good intro here, let's outline the things that we're going to want. So we're going to want, um, an interview process, um, we're going to want, um, recommendations, what those look like in terms of how many um, yeah that's that's the biggest thing I can do. Um, committee makeup that would probably be the first thing when I think about it. anything else that you can think of. These are the main things I can think of now. Is Should recommendations be in here? Well, isn't that what the committee is tasked with doing? Well, I thought you were saying like we shouldn't be focusing on like the content of a proposal. But more oh, just no, 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 this is not the... Oh, I'm so sorry. I was thinking yeah. the contractor receiving like here's my recommendation from this special district I contracted with and oh no no no, 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 no. the committee's yeah. recommendations yeah. on who to contract with oh so you mean in terms of how many how many people are recommended yeah. forward okay yeah I thought it. and is it just a name or is it like an explanation of <clears throat> why the committee liked the person or... mm-hmm yeah, maybe there should be uh, reporting or like report requirements. Yeah, how detailed. Um, Okay, so I want to jump into community makeup. Let's do it, yeah. So, um, the committee shall be made up of no more than three, three members. members. <laughs> the board of directors. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I wanted Team was... Sense. Uh, before that, I was thinking um, the board president or their designee. Or, you know what? No, that's fine. But may also include members of the public. Okay. I, so actually, can an ad hoc committee have members of the public? Yes. Uh, on members the, of the public? Can, can the can yeah. committee have voting members of the public? I think so. Anyway, but here's something. <laughs> I've never been on an ad hoc committee that's like voted, really. Yeah, yeah that's the thing that I was right? thinking. Yeah. Okay. So... Next thing I'm just going to say is, is that all we've really done here is just restated the definition of an ad hoc committee, that the committee shall be made up of no more than three members of the board of directors, and That's they true. also include members of the public. Fine. Okay. Now, do we want it to be members of the public or a member of the public? Because I was looking at, I believe, four members, up to four. Oh, well, I don't, I don't think I'm looking for that um, in this policy. Okay.
So what um, IVRPD does for general manager interviews, which is obviously different because that's an employee, but what they have is um, at least one board member, one staff member, and one public member. What if we have no staff? I'm not saying that we adopt oh. this. I'm just saying that they have. Um, Yeah, I think the Yeah, if we're thinking in terms of 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 comparing it to like a managerial position and hiring process, there are some procedures that I found from for how to the process selection of a city manager from various cities. And this one includes um, alternate members as well. Do you have an adjective on committees such as contractor recommendation committee? I, I think that sounds accurate, yeah. Contractor recommendation committee. I don't. I don't know about recommendation review or selection. The, I, so I thought it was selection at first, but the board of directors is the one that right. selects. Review, because the purpose is to review the yeah. the proposals that are received. But this is on like a. I don't think we're. I think this is on like a rolling. Like as needs come up basis, so I don't think there's going to be a contract. It's not a, yeah, it's not a standard. The, the only reason why I said this is that I feel like okay, we mentioned the ad hoc committee up here, but then it was just like the committee, and I was just like, well, can I qualify what committee I meant mean? Even if it's just like the new committie, I was this committee, this this, this committee, I'm that, fine with that. That okay. works. And rather than focusing on interview process, it should be more review process, right? Yeah, it's, it's both. Yeah. Interviews are something that could be desired. And my intention of putting that on there was not with the intention of thinking that every single RFP that gets put out would have interviews right. because that might not be necessary in some cases. Or possible. There are going to be cases for things that it's just like we're selecting between two weird government contractor groups that are just in the middle of nowhere, and neither of them are going to want to come and give an interview. True. Yeah, true. So, for a review process, perhaps um, upon the close of the acceptance period. This committee will meet and review all proposals submitted. The committee will narrow down the proposals to and how specific do we want to get here? Do we want to tell the committee exactly how they have to narrow it down or in terms of numbers? Like do we need to get put a number right now or make it more the committee should narrow down the the um, proposals received and invite the the top proposers for in for in for interviews. Um, like, do we want to put a number on that? Narrow down the proposals received to three and invite those top three proposers for interviews, or just have it open? I think that it might be good to put a number on it, and here's the reason why. Because if 
if if there is let's say that we have something where we have one person do we we don't I think want to lock the committee into being forced to recommend this one person just because they're the only period person that applied oh, but, but, but putting a number I think the idea is is that let's say that there are um, 20 people who apply and there are three reasonable ones do we want to limit it to two like no no you've got to like only give the board two mm -hmm. I well we like should have a line in here that um, specifying that we the committee should not recommend anyone to the board who they do not believe they would not recommend right Hold the position. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I agree. Um, and so, and I think since we're not specifying the time for the acceptance of proposals in this, that can be worried somewhat outside of this, because a lot of times when you don't have the group you need, you might extend the applicants or widen the pool. So. Yeah, that's true. So would we say three if we're going to put a number on it? I'm okay not putting a number. To I mean, to leave that to the committee. I'm I prefer not leaving a number. Cool. Mm -hmm. So the one question I've got here is: um, the committee will narrow down the proposals received and invite the top proposers for interviews with the committee, mm -hmm. with the board, with the committee. So is the committee supposed to, so let's say there are 20 people who apply, and they narrow it down to three. They have interviews with the three, and then they recommend the three to the board? Or is it that they have well, not, 20? not recommend the three to the board. They're going to want to recommend, like, someone. I, I think they're going to want to give the board direction on what their best choice is. OK, uh, yeah, so I, the, the Essentially, the question I was coming down to is, is that the here I was it, it almost felt like the final recommendation was somehow tied to the interview because it's the top proposers for interviews, and so like the committee will um, filter for uh, reasonable uh, applicants, uh, schedule interviews. Um, with those that remain and then recommend their um, their preferred option to the board of directors? Well, I, I don't think that we're going to schedule interviews with every reasonable applicant, though. For example, okay. with um, our internship program, we got 48 applicants in that first pool. And I was told okay. that over 30 were reasonable. Okay. All, all, all the main thing I was trying to do here, though, was just to change the ordering of this to make sure. it feel like, okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. So, um, go back to the wording you had there, which is uh, narrowed down the, because, yeah, we're not doing that as proposals received. I'm going to put back. I'll put back to board yet. Sorry. Uh, and how about conduct interviews with? Maybe. The maybe remaining? I, 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 the desired. Well, one of the terms that I think is often used is they narrow it down. You select your finalists, you interview the finalists, and then you make a recommendation yeah. to the board. Finalists, but you the also, board yeah, you also <laughs> tell the board, like, these were our X number of finalists, but this is the one that we are recommending. Yeah. I don't know if the board needs the list of finalists. I think they just need the... What if the board doesn't like it? No, I think it's good to give the board the list of finalists. Okay. Got it. 
Mm -hmm. And I think from what I've seen in terms of timelines on other RFPs, I think it's pretty standard that you give the board the list of finalists. You know, maybe you don't give the board a report that says like, you know, here are all here's a very extensive like thing about the finalists that we didn't recommend to you. You kind of want to you can you, you want you know piss off the people who get recommended or the firms that didn't get recommended. Right. So I guess I'll just read this out loud to the record. The committee will narrow down the proposals received, conduct interviews with the finalists, and then refer the final list of finalists along with their preferred choice to the board of directors. Along with its preferred choice. Got it. And after um, narrowed down the proposals received, can you insert a clause that says select finalists and then comma? Those finalists? Yeah, okay, it's his, it's his grand name. Do we need to specify the scope of contractors that were discussing this? Because what just rang in my mind was like, when you see the word contractor, a lot of times people think of like, say for instance, public works, where with that there's like legal requirements that we have in the bidding process. Mm -hmm. And for this type of, of contractor that I think we're all thinking of, of professional services, um, I don't know that there's that legal requirement. I don't believe there is a legal requirement. Um, we could specify that this is contract selection and review for professional services. Perfect. Or, yeah. Management would be a professional service, right? Mm -hmm. So would legal services? Yeah. So would clerical services, accounting, correct. So Jay, if, if you want to keep this committee, um, we should adjust it in the second paragraph because there's a few of the committees. Well, I'm, I'm actually okay with right. the transition in the different Okay. Strokes of the sentences, unless yeah. you don't like it. But no, I, I saw you're trying okay. to you're trying to get continuity between two paragraphs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, I'm even. Yeah, I'm not going to say this. Okay. So I, I did change. I, I actually ended up attaching this to this paragraph in order to make that flow more directly. At which point, I'm actually okay changing this one back to the. The thing is perfect. I like it. All right. Um. All right. Now, in fact, really, what would what, what, what happened before is that this sentence is the middle. I'm willing to change this one back to the if you want that one. <laughs> I, I see a smile. You want those I'm off? confused with what you did. But what happened? I mean, what, yeah, the, the, thing that, the thing that I did earlier was that this that sentence talking. used to be here. And that, and, and that just kind of like disconnected the idea of the committee. And so that's why when I moved that sentence to the end, I suddenly stopped caring about saying this committee. So if, you, if you'd like this to say the committee, I'd be okay with it now. Um, indifferent. I think the difference is punitive. Okay. okay. I'll say B. Um, now they're all B. Now, this policy obviously inherently assumes that there was a this policy that there will uh, be a request for qualifications and proposals sent out. Is that a standard that we want to set in this policy? I, I think that that would be good. I'm, 
hoping we can make recommendations on that within this. I would certainly favor such a policy. I think it's good to have that yeah. process. That, that and I don't think we'll be process. drafting that policy tonight, but it's okay for us to assume. But it, we, we are under the assumption. Now that we've added for professional services, I would say yes. Okay. Well, I hadn't. Well, my scope in my mind earlier wasn't expanding all the way to public works because I knew that that had different laws. I was yeah. expanding my scope to like, what if we um, want to uh, purchase some office equipment or something? But like, that's not quite. But like, contract with somebody to come and install some office equipment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I know she. Yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. what else do we want to add to this? Um, as far as the intent that you wrote in here, I think we have it all. It's not specified we... the form of the recommendations other than that it is simply a list. Okay. Like, do we want there to be new more paragraph, information new paragraph, forwarded? New paragraph. Okay. The committee shall be responsible for preparing a written report to the board of directors detailing the qualifications I, I want to say like qual the qualifications of the firm or individual that's being selected but it's not just qualification to be the merits uh, qualifications uh, merits um, and proposed scope of services. Isn't the proposed scope of services what the board of directors told the ad hoc committee they would need? And then the ad hoc committee needs to go find somebody to fulfill the proposed scope of services? Well, then I think we just have detailing the qualifications, merits, and proposal. Proposal, yeah. Maybe that's what I'm meaning. Yeah. Proposal of the proposer. <laughs> of the proposer oh, yeah. who is being recommended. I only leave it because he rewound. So I was like, oh, he's going to change it. But now he can. Yeah. Only the one being recommended. I mean, I would imagine yes, because I the the thing that I think we get into when we start preparing reports on the firms and individuals who didn't get selected is like the reasons why they didn't get selected. It's fair, right? And I just feel like that would not be a good fair. Idea. How about qualifications, merits, and proposal of the recommended proposer? Last part. Yeah, yeah. Last I was. Part. Part. That's yeah. That that's a good sense. one. Can you scroll down a little bit to? See the bullet points again. Okay, so we have recommendations for and what they look like in terms of how many, how detailed in the interview process, committee makeup. Um, is there a desire to be more specific in committee makeup? No. Yeah, I generally favor that too, just because of the fact that professional services is a pretty broad category. And I feel like anything that we would do to narrow it from just saying that it would be up to three directors and members of the public would, would just not serve to set the board up well in the future. Right. Now, one more thing to consider is I'm pretty sure when hiring a high level like um, executive, whether an employee or a contractor, the board can go into closed session. I think that's outside the scope of this policy, but 
but that was just something that. Yeah, I think so too. I need like a, a pilot need recommendation a when it gets to the board. Yeah, that's something that we should all review. Yeah. Because I'm unaware if that is for employees or if that applies to contractors as well. I think the phrase that the Brown Act uses is personnel. Right. All right. And uh, let's change merits to merit. I think that can be without the S. So that would be the same as saying like detailing the qualifications, excellence, and proposal of the recommended. Do we want to have it have this thing a restate the criteria of selection? Uh, I don't think we need it in the policy. Okay, it would just be assumed that that would be something. Well, I think everyone should know what it is, and if not, like, I think it'll be clear that since it was set, this is what we're judging them on. I'm not saying, though, if you did want to include it. I'm not saying that we establish a criteria for selection. I'm saying right. that we just say that the criteria for selection, maybe that's something that the committee needs to work out. I feel like now I think that the, we're getting into something that if there was a criteria for selection that the committee was working out, then that would be strange given that if you were floating a request for a proposal, you would want to include the criteria for selection in that document. Right, so that would come from the board before this committee was even formed. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty happy with this. I think I am too. I'm. I guess in a little ways, I, I'm a little surprised that it's this short. But I mean, I don't know what I was imagining. But I was certainly, <laughs> I was like imagining it. something totally different. But I like <laughs> yes. it. So. Have a motion. All right. I move. To recommend that the board of directors adopt the following policy entitled Contractor Selection and Review for Professional Services to read as follows. Upon a decision of the board of directors to solicit qualifications and proposals from interested parties, the Board of Directors shall appoint an ad hoc committee to be responsible for reviewing and recommending proposers to the Board of Directors for selection. The committee shall be made up of no more than three members of the Board of Directors, but may also include a member of the public. Upon the close of the acceptance period of proposals, the committee will meet and review all proposals submitted. The committee will narrow down the, the proposals received, select finalists, conduct interviews with those finalists, and then refer the list of finalists along with its preferred choice to the board of directors. The committee shall be responsible for preparing a written report to the board of directors detailing the qualifications, merit, and proposal of the recommended proposer. The Board of Directors will then be responsible for taking action to execute an agreement. I second. Is there any public comment on this motion? Any more board second. comment? Wait, wait, what? Okay. Uh, I want to amend it to take the word following out of the first line, just so that it's adopt the policy entitled, unless do you guys, was, do we oh. usually have it like that? To read as follows? No, this no, following. This I following. kind of remember that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I don't, I think the we, difference is not. Since you follow me multiple times, sure, we can get rid of it. Either one, either way that we decide it's friendly, so okay. Okay. I think the difference is not Yeah. So let me take out the comment policy. Ooh, 
Uh, wait. Okay, sure. Oh, we have and any more board comments. Spencer maybe, because he's staring. I don't see anything. All right. Let's take a vote. Ethan. Aye. Spencer. Aye. Jay. Aye. Motion passes. 3 0 at 7.43 p.m. Okay. Oh, I think that's not bad. I don't know. Did we also want to do, we, we specifically separated out the contracting from hiring. Did we want to? We did. Do we want to tackle the staff as well? I mean, um, do we see a pressing need for hiring the staff? I, I don't see the need. I'm a, I'm a little wary now that I think about it after having reviewed some of these city manager selection documents, just in the sense that we we don't have any it, it's not something that i think is going to be coming before the board anytime soon and i just think there are more, more like further considerations than like i think that i would want to do more research before we just okay wordsmith one cool so is yeah. there anything else you want to cover during the agenda Spencer's staring at I don't. I don't think so. I think that yeah, everything okay. that was written in the agenda item. I think we covered. Any public comment before we leave agenda item number one. Okay, number two: announce future meeting dates. Uh, so, seventeen. That is June second now, so we've got a board meeting. It'd be the twelfth, I believe. Tuesday the sixth, and yeah, our next meeting would be Monday the twelfth. Monday the twelfth, and that would be at five p.m. I thought. It, wait, what? Are all of our meetings at six thirty? I thought they were six thirty. Okay, I wrote that down wrong then. Okay. I was <laughs> gonna say that <laughs> this time. Yeah, that's the reason I was like five p.m. <laughs> Okay, so 6.30 on the 12th, uh, any public comment about announcing future meeting dates? Seeing none. Let's move on to number three, motion, adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Um, I'm going to say you move to adjourn. Okay. And that was, was that your motion? <laughs> I move to adjourn, yeah. Good, all right. Second. Any public comment on adjournment? Don't adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Too, soon. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. Okay. So uh, let's go to vote. Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. <laughs> Jay? Aye. Motion passes. Jonathan may be on the fence about that last vote. Yes. <laughs> At 7.46 p.m., I call this meeting adjourned.